Hi, baby. Hi, you see the kitties? All right, well, I just came up with a plan for a pea chick house. Pretty simple, be kind of like an outdoor brooder, but we need a place to put them because they're about six weeks old now. So let's get the pea chicks out and show you what the next phase of their life is. Let's go. So last month we hatched out four baby peacocks, or pea chicks, after failing to get white pea chicks for the past three years. After dealing with internal parasites that killed off our seven pea chicks last year, we're trying to protect this year's hatchlings by keeping them off the ground till they are a little older and a little stronger. So today we're building them a new outdoor shelter. But will they like being outside? Will they like being on the mesh floor? Let's find out. <laughs> so our big goal has always been to have some white peacocks. Come here, pea chicks. Ooh. So here are our white pea chicks. They're getting so cool, really starting to grow up. And this is already time when we were starting to lose them last year by having them outside on grass, having them with a hen that had probably a lot of parasites. So they've been doing really well in here, but they're starting to grow out, outgrow this space. And we feel bad here that it's summer and it's warm outside and we've got to keep them all cooped up inside. But we thought, hey, we can keep them off the ground, but still keep them outside and let them get some fresh air. This is our pied pea chick. And so it has some other colors along with white. Oh boy. I think some of you guys requested that we called them Piper. So Pied Piper, I like that name. We'll use that. Now this is the pea chick that has a little foot problems where the feet are a little curved and we've tried to fix it several times, putting little pieces of cardboard or little pieces of popsicle sticks underneath and then tape over them, straighten them out and we just couldn't get them to stay on. So it's a little tricky for this one to walk, but that's what it's gonna take because we've gotta get these toes to be straightened out. So don't know if it will cause death. Certainly everything else functions correctly. And so I don't think it'll really affect this pea chick's life overall, but we'll find out. We'll find out if this is gonna cause any kind of problems, and hopefully not. Of course, you'd poop. They always poop when I hold them. So this is where they've been living. This is like four feet wide by two feet, and they've got lots of head space, but they can't really fly up there. So we, we so what, come here. So what we wanna do is make a space out here that's longer, gives them more room to run, that utilizes the back of this building. Hopefully it will be somewhat of a rain block. So I think I could get it about eight feet long, two, three, four feet tall, and then give them like a covered area to sleep in, a roof on it, and then have a hardware cloth floor so they poop through it, and then they don't obtain any bugs or parasites by being on the ground, they'll be above the ground. I think we'd keep them in there till about five months old, so probably for the next three or four months till this fall, and then hopefully we can move a pair of them into the aviary, and then the other two, we'll put them in one of the other coops for a while until we start to free range. Oh, you gonna throw the bird up? Uriah's got one of the pigeons here. Go ahead. So let's get some wood out and we'll start to build our pea chick house right here. Jumping right into it. We're jumping into the process here. We've got our, basically our floor of their coop. And then I've got legs that I'm gonna stand up. And so I've kind of used some boxes here to get it up about three feet off the ground. So I'm gonna stand those up and attach those. And then you'll, you'll start to see the shape of what we're coming up with. It's starting to come together. Now I need to have a floor on this. I need to have some hardware cloth. And I don't know what it normally is, like a quarter inch by quarter inch or half inch by half inch stuff. I need to go get some, cause I'm gonna put that on the front most likely, but I have this really a tight hardware cloth and I've, I haven't used it in years. I think it's been five, six years since I built a door for our old coop at our old house. And I've just had a roll of it sitting around and this is perfect for the floor. It's gonna be a tighter mesh. Hopefully the poop falls through, but it should be a lot easier for them to walk on. So 
we're getting ready for bed tonight. And today's video is sponsored by Beans. Their dream powder to help us sleep better. So we're getting our drinks ready tonight so we can get some good sleep. So we're ready to go tomorrow. I'm gonna try the chocolate peanut butter. The dream powder from Beam contains ingredients such as L-theanine, magnesium, melatonin, and reishi to help you fall asleep and stay asleep. It comes with a frother. It comes in different flavors and potencies so you can customize it to your lifestyle and it tastes delicious like a nighttime hot chocolate. It contains no added sugar and it's only five calories. Mm. Pretty good. It's like hot chocolate, a little bit of peanut butter in it. Yep, that tastes great. Well, we'll go to sleep in a few minutes. We'll let you know how we feel in the morning. Did you sleep good last night? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't wake up. It was good. Oh my goodness. As soon as I hit the bed, I was out. Hey, Cashew. I slept really good. I slept very soundly. I didn't get up in the middle of the night. So, you can get some for yourself by clicking the link in my description and use the code WHOH, White House on the Hill, and get 35% off your first order and 20% off all future orders. And when you subscribe, you'll get your own Beam Frother free with your first order. And with your subscription, you can pause, skip, or cancel anytime. There is no risk at all. So just click the link and then use my code WHOH. And thank you to Beam for sponsoring today's video. All right, what do you think of our big beast of a peacock house? It's pretty big. All right, so we're gonna move it over into position now that we've got about halfway built so we can get the rest of it done over there because it's gonna start getting pretty heavy with all the wood and everything else. Going on. Is it heavy? Too bad. Right. It's done we'll have the roof at the end but I'm gonna start framing in this section closing this whole area up. you want it against the wall no because the roof's gonna run off it needs it has to run off the back so it doesn't just come down the back of the wood and ruin the wood the metal roof would come out to like here and it would go off an inch or two back here so it doesn't run down the back of the thing So we've got it in place now, and this is getting fun. We're gonna give them a fun little resting spot in their coop area that comes out here. So that'll rest in there. They can jump on, they can, from in here, they can jump up to here, hang out in there, and then they can come inside their coop. I'm thinking I'll put some other little roosting spots a little higher up so they can jump around in there, but they'll be able to go down, come up, go to a couple different levels. We'll see how they utilize it, if they like it at all. I'm not sure, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. So let me attach that. This one's kind of fun. This is a little, corner spot for them to get up on and maybe we'll put some food or water up here we'll see very nice so lastly i just need to close in the front of this coop we've got some hardware cloth to, to put on here to keep any predators out and keep the birds in all right so i'm at the part where i'm going to start putting sheet metal on top i thought you guys might like to see this if you're like me and you get really tired of using wood or plastic different things to protect coops from the weather and it's really frustrating to cut metal because Either it's really difficult to cut it with scissors, or if you're like me, you've tried to use some, not this saw, but I used some of the table saws and I've really burned up the blades using it. Well, I found this tool and it's made cutting sheet metal much easier. We've got this metal shear gun, I guess. And it does pretty good cutting through. Basically it pushes a little piece there in the middle and cuts against it. So you just gotta put a little force behind it and it does a pretty quick and amazing job. So a few more pieces of that metal, we'll be ready to close it up, put the peat chicks in. So while I'm finishing up the new peat chick coop, I wanted to show you a couple others that we built along the way that have kind of inspired each thing that we build and you might see the progression from one thing to another. This was actually the first coop we built, but it looked nothing like this. It was actually just a rectangle. It had arms on it so you could drag it. it. had these arms on it so you could actually drag it from one spot to another but at some point we decided to stop putting smaller chickens in there. We wanted a place for some bigger chickens to be able to live. Convert it into our little mini coop. We've had dozens of people that have built this from using our plans and 
and uh, we've seen some awesome designs with this. There's rubble and the three Bruges fighters. We recently lost two of these, a rooster and a hen. I think we had a fox that came through. We ended up catching a fox back here and took out two of these chickens and five in our rooster flock. This was our second little mobile structure. This was for our rabbits. We had a, a male on one side, female on the other. We still have our male pickles. He's in an actual little rabbit hutch now. Oh, did that hurt? But now we've opened it completely up, so we've got our four pond ducks all living here and able to come in through an automatic chicken door right over there. Then somewhere early on, we built this little coop. There's a couple little mandarins in here that are just a couple weeks old. Super cute. So we built this coop to have a, a broody hen that'll hatch out chicks and raise them in here. We just did that earlier this year with our Indio Gante hen and she raised a couple chicks in here. That was one of our earliest structures we built. And then before the newest pea chick house, we built a brooder and some little quail hutches. So right back here, we put all of our new chicks, any recently hatched out birds, we'll put them in here. They've got a heat lamp up above, food, water, wood chips, pretty easy to clean out, three little doors on top. And then our quail go right in here. It's a really tall, I don't know, I think it's four feet tall, maybe two feet deep. And so it's a good amount of space for the quail and some other little birds that we'll put in here. Look at these really teeny eggs. They're so small. Look at that beauty. First time ever getting broccoli. Woohoo! Mmm. All right, I'm finally done with the pea chick house. We're ready to move them in. You can do it. Don't let go. Hold over the top. That's uh, Hyper. Hyper. All right, so we got this house kind of reconfigured. Initially, I was going to make the access spot from the top, but it's just too high up and. Couldn't access all of them. So now we've got a, a door here on the side and a door in the middle. And we tried this out briefly before and they like all of the, the wooden flooring. That's what they're used to. They don't really like this mesh, even though it's pretty tight. That's what I'm a little worried about is how long is it gonna take them to adjust to walking on the, the mesh floor. All right, well, I like to see them jumping around, but I gotta make sure that they're eating and drinking, staying safe from predators, which I think they will in this coop. Let's see how they do tonight, and then I'll go over everything around this coop tomorrow. Can you see the pea chicks? sneak up on the pea chicks here. We've been watching them for the last few days and they've finally been walking on the floor and eating the food and I had a feeling it would happen but it was taking longer than I expected. So while they're hopping around, let me show you around their new home. You might see a general theme to a lot of our buildings. I use a lot of scrap wood, so it's a lot of two by fours or two by sixes in this instance. Some plywood that's been used before. I'll cut a lot of two by fours in half to make a lot of doors to make them lighter. And then we use a lot of our used sheet metal that we either found in one of our ditches here on the property or that we took off the old garage that was over here before. So we have this spot right here. This is their little coop shelter deal that they can go in. So you can see mesh floor. We've got a little walkway to walk through the middle. I've got a extra water in here and there's one outside. And then a couple little roost spots over there. So, and then right here we did a double door. Initially I had this as a solid front and then I had a little kind of a sneaky entry right up here where we could lift this up and go in there. It just became too difficult. It was a little too high for all of us. So I decided to just do doors, just like we did on our quail hutch. It's got a magnet at the top, a handle, and then a little latch at the bottom, able to pull each door open so we can access every bit of this space. Peacocks are on the 
for this little ledge from me here. They've got that spot, that spot, and then the food and drink down here at the bottom. Now that's been fun to watch them jump all the way across here and use every bit of this. See, when we're not using this for pea chicks, we've talked about using it for a rabbit, and making a fun little walkway path around here for, for him to go in. But I love that it's safe, secure, gives them lots of outdoor air. I don't have to worry about them and it gives them a lot more space to run around. And I feel like after a couple days, I think the pea chicks, they're starting to like it. So what do you guys think? Anything we should do different? Anything we should paint here on the outside? I'd love to hear your ideas. We'll see you guys next time. You poop on you? You pooped all of your shirt. Oh man, you can't hold them against your body. They'll poop on you. Ah, you pooped on me too. Dang it. What these peacocks do is poop on you. <sighs> All right, let's go get you cleaned up, bud.